Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another webinar from Urban Creatives Project, which is founded by Youth Included Organization. Uh, for those who don't know our website yet, um, uh, I posted it on the uh, Zoom chat and also you can find it on the description uh, on the Facebook event. Uh, on our website, you can find out information about um, and many materials like webinars and uh, articles about um, a healthy lifestyle, um, like ecology uh, related topics, uh, nutrition and um, gardening. Um, we have also launched a mapping tool where you can explore many eco and uh, many eco-friendly and English friendly local businesses in Czech Republic. Um, okay, so I think that's enough from my side and I will give a word to our lecturer, lecturer Luis. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Luis Monteiro. I'm a Portuguese landscape architect and garden designer based here in Prague, Czech Republic for many years and I'm doing gardens for client. I'm also one of my biggest hobby is gardening. I do have a garden and I'm a no dig vegetable and herb grower, meaning I use ecological principles in my gardening practices. At the same time, I'm also develop, developing gardening education activities for children. So I'm teaching at the Portuguese school slash club. And there I'm developing activities for children. And my idea is to start more and more, to start activities for, for, for children, try to organize more workshops and not only children, but also parents, because I see that there's more and more interest on the topic. There's more interest, the families are more interested, especially now or after or now during COVID. Uh, and the topic today, uh, is, is about how to grow and use herb, herbs and ed, ed, edible flowers. So the main goal today is to inspire you to do it and to use it in, on a daily basis. I think everyone knows about herbs, what are herbs, some of them um, are, are well known, some of them they are not well known, but a topic which is getting more and more attention is edible flowers, you know. So it's more and more popular. People know and see some of the dishes of the high cuisines and you see that the, the chefs are using more flowers on their uh, dishes. So I will try to address this, this topic because it's also something interesting for me. As I'm more and more into the topic and herbs and edible flowers. And for my biggest surprise, and maybe it will be also your biggest surprise, is many of the flowers that we grow, whether indoor or outdoor, or some of the flowers, they can be edible, and some of the herbs, they can be used not only as we imagine or as we see it, as we grow it for it, but they can be used for another uses. So not only the leaves, not only the, the stems, not only the, the flowers, but they can be used also for eco ecological principles. But before I move into the descriptions, I would like to mention more technical, scientific parts, because it will raise some, some terms that they are important for, for, for this, this description. So the plants have a life cycle, and the life cycle can div be divided into and the first one is the vegetative, vegetative phase. And so where the plants develop the leaves, the branches or stems and the roots. And the second phase is the re reproductive phase where the plants develop flowers, fruits and seeds. And why is this important? Is because we do grow and use plants in each different phases. And according to the plant life cycle, plants tends to be annual, biannual, and perennial. So annual, it means that the plant just, it, it needs one year for, for the entire life cycle. Some examples are basil, 
coriander, coriander even though can be biennial, the dial chamomile or nastir, nast, nast, nasturtius. Sorry about sometimes I read more in Latin than, than, than in English, but that you will see which, which flower it is. So, and all of them, they are annual. So when the plant needs two years to, to, to reach the entire cycle, they are cons considered biannual. So it means that the first year they put all the energy to grow and they keep the energy for the second year to put the flower in. So the, 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 the reproductive uh, phase. Parsley is one of the cases, charvel and clary sage. There are so many examples, but also vegetables, for example, uh, carrots and beetroots. They do the same. So in fact, carrots will start to, to my carrots will start to bloom now from the previous year. I let, I, I used it, it this is interesting because I, I, let, I leave it and I can use the flowers for, for eating, not only the roots. So the root is already like, it means it's strong. So I'm using the flowers and I will eat the flowers and stems, but also they will attract beneficial uh, insects that are, will be good for, for, or good insects that will be good for the gardening and also for poll 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 pollinators that will be useful for another plants. Or plants can be perennial. It means that they can last many and many years. For example, uh, uh, trees are perennial and some of the herbs and flowers, they're also perennials. For example, the chives, mint, oregano, and lav lavender, they are perennial herbs and, and, and flowers, herbs. And the plants can also be di divided by, so we use uh, the, the edible parts of the, of the plants. We use leaves, we use flowers, or we use seeds. For example, the oregano, basil, thyme, parsley, and sage. We use mostly the leaves, uh, although oregano and basil can also, we can also eat the, the flowers. Borage, calendula, and lavender, we use the, the, the flowers, although lavender, lavender, we can also use the leaves for another uses. And seeds, coriander, dill, chives, and fennel. Coriander, I underline them because we can use every part of the plant, basically, and the chives the same. And you see some of the examples here in the images. So and the herbs can be divided in culinary herbs and also in medicinal herbs. And, and there was, there, until the 17th century, uh, in fact, herbs were classified vegetables, but now they are already cons considered a, a different group. And they can be used as fresh, fresh or dried to add, add flavor and seasoning to a food. Uh, there's also a big discussion what it's a herb, what is a culinary herbs, or what is a, what is a spice. So spice can also be herb. There's a big discussion in between the horticulture uh, world. Or herbs can be medicinal. It's something quite new for me, but they are, but you, we, we use chamomile for, for as a tea. So it's one of the, the examples of, of how we use the herbs for medicinal use. And we know that this is, it's a topic is something that exists since the prehistoric time, since long time ago. Uh, and also something that it's quite popular today is edible flowers. And we can have edible flowers that can be grow for, also for the flower, only for the flower or the herbs flower can be edible, something, something to be to, to, to consider different. And, and they bring texture, color and flavor to dishes. So they can, can be used for decorations, appetizers, starters, for cakes and many other dishes. And, but consider that not all, not all, uh, all flowers are edible and also not all flowers are tasty. So some of them, they are used only for color or for, or for texture. And here, for example, in the first image, you see borage, something that I planted the other day. So we can use the, fl the flowers. It's one of the, 
the, my ideas why I planted that I can eat the flowers, but at the same time, they are really, really good for pollinators. They attract beneficial insects to the garden. And we can produce and use herbs at home, like, and, and the way of propagation of the herbs can be by seeds, by sowing. Seeds means by sowing. Basil, chives, and coriander are some of the examples. By cuttings, it means that we just select the best branches or the best stems, and we just cut it, put it in a good medium, media, so a medium, it means in a good soil and good propagation, propagation uh, compost. We keep it in warm, and this stem or little branches, they will develop some, some roots. And this is the way of, of propagate, for example, mint, rosemary, sage, and thyme. Or it can be, as you see in the image, by plant division. And mint and tarragon is one of the examples. But chives can also be done like this. And that image, for example, they are doing coriander as a, a way of plant division, although coriander, as we saw it, the life cycle is just one year. So one year to two years. So it means that, in fact, they are just dividing the plant for bigger production, but the plant will die after one year. But chives is one of the examples here in, in my garden that I did it this year. So I divide a big portion of the chive that I had on the pot, and just make it three of them, and just, and just plant it in, independent. And it's also good for you to divide some of the plants because they tend to a certain age when they turn, when they start to be old, it's good for divide the plants for better regeneration, for the for give power, give uh, give power to the plant itself. And so and I will focus a bit more on propagation by seeds. I already spoke about cuttings. And they can propagation by seed can be done in seed trays. I have here an example. I hope you can see it. This is a seed tray. So basically, what I do, I just spread all the, the seed, the seeds, and what that, and this is one of the advantages that you can produce a lot in one seed tray. But also, after I will be pricking, basically, I will be taking the seedlings into independent uh, models or even into small pots. And the big advantage is that I'm going to choose the best seedlings. And this will allow me to have the best plants uh, into my garden or at home. Or they can just do, we can just use modules. This is one of the examples. And you can do it in the majority of this, of the, of the herbs, you can do multi sowing. So you can do a lot of seedlings or a lot of seeds in one module. And after you can just thin, it means that some of you can leave uh, some of them together, but you can just choose the, the, the strongest one. It's also a way to choose the best, the best seedlings. And I can say that you can. You, it's better to start in small pots than and later transplant for bigger because the majority of the seedlings they don't start to really grow until the roots touch the the walls of the pot. So it's better to to start in the, in, the, in smaller pots, and it's also good to pot it a plant one size each time. It means that you don't start in a model and after put in a really big pot because this brings stress to the plant and many times we lose the, the plants like that so it's better to go to be to have a, a smaller progression by by pots than just to go and make sowings or seedlings in bigger pot, pots so you can grow herbs in containers and one of the advantages is good drainage so it means that i i recommend you if you start seedlings if you start in containers to keep uh, in the bottom for for help the drainage to to put some some stones on the bottom or parts of of pots to help the whole the drainage hole of the of the pot not to be full and one of the advantages is that you can move the the, the plants from one place to the other one some plants for example during the winter they are they are not hardy frost or they don't resist the winter. 
and you can bring it in or some plants when they are small they need a lot of uh, light and when they are bigger they don't need that much light or they are susceptible for for sunlight or for high temperatures and you could just move them for another for another place uh, requirements that you it should be a good container what i can recommend is terracotta terracotta container uh, because it keeps good temperature it doesn't really eat that much as with uh, metal containers and also it allows there's a air circulation because it's porous it means it has porous so it means there's circulation of air between outside and inside of the, of the pot and to the to the soil and it's really good to have a good potting medium so what i can recommend it's peat free and you can add some uh, inert uh, substance it means like perlite or vermiculite and also e and also it's good to choose a good potting uh, uh, compost and not a multi-purpose compost to harvest the herbs the best is to start it in the morning i think this is quite in in interesting and important because before because later in the day the essential oils tends to evaporate it's always better for remove the the leaves from outside so you harvest from outside because the the, the plant tends to produce more leaves from from the from the inside or from the from the inside of the plant and is easily the herbs can be preserved in oils vinegars or by freezing i tend to freeze coriander although it's not bad, coriander and to keep for example one of the recommendations what i have is to keep basil when is basil into olive oil because it gives also the olive oil some some flavors extra flavors or you can just soak the basil in olive oil a little bit and put it in bags and freeze it it's perfect when you want to cook pastas because it, it helps to, pre pre to preserve for further for further use and now without uh, i will just mention some of the herbs i know the most known one of the things that i would like to know to to, to say is if you want to know more about herbs because there's a big list and i start to to, to be more into it and to know more and more that's really a big list please feel free to contact me because i would be uh, more than happy to share to share about about herbs so the first example what i have here rosemary rosmarinus officinalis quite uh, quite uh, common or quite close to me because it's more associated with with mediterranean region so it's a, a warm loving plant the majority of propagation is done by seeds or by cuttings but i must say that in this case it's a, because it's evergreen and and it's evergreen uh, plant the the best is to do it by cuttings I'm already explaining how to, how to do it 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 needs at least 6 hours of days of, of of sunlight so i would place i place mine in a sunny corner in the garden and because it's mostly associated with the mediterranean regions it needs low watering needs it doesn't need really that much watering it's not hardy plant uh, this is what i think or, or what i know so it doesn't really resist the the hard winters here on in central europe although i saw already a big rosemary in the garden and i was very surprised but mine died outside so i'm now planting one in a pot where I, that i can just bring it in, inside during winter so you can harvest during all year and normally we can use rosemary for culinary uses and ornamental it's beautiful plants lavender everyone knows lavender mostly the propagation by seeds cutting or division it's also a plant associated with the Mediterranean region, so it, it likes it likes full sun and moderate, moderated watering. You is better to prune during the spring in the beginning, so right before it starts the, the, the develop of the, the flowers, because what tends is this 
stems with a, with a stems with a with a flowering they dry out during the the winter so it's good to cut the the, the flower the dried flowers so that it produce flowers again or or more flowers it's, it will always produce flowers but it will produce more if you if you prune it it's hardy plant mine are outside and resist quite quite well you can harvest all year fresh or dry and normally you can we can use as a culinary in culinary infusions and as an aromatic use aromatic we know that we can just keep it in bags and put it in the wardrobe and it will always give good smell for for the for the house or, or for for the for the clothes chives uh, propagation chives check pajitka <laughs> and they normally propagate by seeds or by plant division i can say that here in the garden they were in a pot and they produce the seeds and the seeds have fallen into the, the floor and they i have chives growing in between tiles basically so it's really easy to propagate it by seeds but also by plant division as i said i just divide one big plant in three and now i have three different plants in the garden it also needs a sun, so at least four to, to six hours of daylight. Uh, it's good to water a small amount, but regular. It's, it, but at the same time, it, need, as it, it also survives a lot of drought. drought. Uh, it's a hardy plant, but it dries out. It means that during the winter, the, the entire plant dries out. And after it will rise again because the roots will stay there and it will rise again. So once the plant dries out, it's good to, to cut the, the dry part. We can harvest during the spring and during the summer. So we can cut until one third of the plant. If you cut more than one third of the plant, probably the plant will die. And we can, as I said, we can eat basically everything, the leaves, the, the, the buds and also the flowers. They are quite tasty. And normally is using culinary in, in, in the kitchen. So culinary use. Coriander, everyone knows coriander, propagation majority by seeds. Coriander likes shade. It's, it really tolerates shade. So you can grow, grow, grow it in the, in the shady co corner of the garden. It needs small amount but regular watering. Otherwise, it tends to, if you water a lot, it, the roots tends to, to, to rot. Uh, once it flowers, something that is happening now in the, in the garden. So normally I'm cutting out the flowers so that it develops, it continues to develop more, more uh, leaf, leaves. This because when the plant develops the, the flowers, the, all the energy of the plant goes to the flower and basically the plant doesn't develop more, more, more leaves or a small amount of leaves. So if you cut out the flowers, it develops way more leaves and you can basically expand the life cycle or expand the, 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 the life cycle of the, of the plant. And, and normally, it's using culinary use of all plants. As I said before, we use the, the leaves. We can use, we can eat the flowers and the seeds. It can be used if you grind it as a spice. Lemon ball, the propagation by seeds, cuttings or division. It's one of the plants that likes, it prefers shade. It prefers uh, partial shade. So it's good to water, to keep moisture in the soil but it's not good to water the plant. So you should water the soil under the plant. And this is because if you water the, the leaves, it tends to develop some disease. When, the, when we see that the leaves are getting old, we should prune it for more development of the plant. And also before the beginning of the flowering, if we, at, the at the same, if we want to extend the, the life cycle of the plant. We should harvest, harvest before flowering. And normally the lemon bulb is used in culinary use and cosmetics. Basil, everyone knows basil, I, I guess. It's majority, you can see it here. I already show you is, is propagation by seeds usually, or the majority you do it by seeds. 
it likes full sun. So mine are in the greenhouse, in fact, but you would choose a, a sunny window or a sunny corner of the garden. They like warm weather. They don't like, they don't resist uh, cold temperatures, but also one of the things that I can tell you, it's a plant that develops very fast now. So what I'm doing, basically I have some in the, in the greenhouse and it's already going for, for, for flowering and it's very big. So I'm removing the flowering, but at the same time, because I know that the flower will, will be uh, fast die or will develop so fast. So I'm starting another ones. So basically you can just, because it develops so fast, you can just start and have uh, flowers and flower, uh, plants and plants over the, over the season. So, as I said, you can prune the big stems. So this is what I'm doing in the flowers to keep the vegetative phase, not to go to the reprodu reproductive phase. And it's good to harvest the leaves before flowering. You can also eat the, the, the flowers, as I said before, and normally is used in culinary uses, fresh or dry. Oregano, propagation by seeds, cuttings or division. It's a perennial plant. We cannot forget this. So it's in my garden for five or six years. It likes full sun, also associated with the Mediterranean uh, region. Likes regular watering, watering, but not that much. I prune it when it's big and remove flowers before uh, blooming. And I harvest stems and leaves. And you, we, but although we can eat the flowers as well. And I'm using, of course, in, in, in my, my recipes. Parsley, majority if propagated by seeds, it's a shade tolerant and hardy plant. I must share with you that the same with a, the with a coriander, parsley, they resist all winter in the, green, in the greenhouse. And you might say, okay, the greenhouse is protected and somehow it creates a good environment for, for, the, for the, the vegetables or the herbs. But you cannot forget if it's minus 14 outside during the night, it means that in the greenhouse it's even colder. So the, the, the herbs, it's, they are protected from the elements, but what is happening is because there is no water super, uh, air circulation inside of the greenhouse, it's even colder. So that's why I said it is a hardy plant and you can use it if there's some protection, you, you, can, you, you can plant it uh, you, over, it can last over the, the, the winter. It's good to keep soil moisture with, with parsley. It likes regu regular watering. It's good to prune for bloom when blooming for leaf development, the same. Uh, parsley is now blooming. So what I'm doing is I'm pruning the big stems that they develop before the, 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 the flowers. You can harvest the entire stems and leaves, mostly in the morning because of the not losing the, the essential oils and the majority is used in culinary use, fresh or dry. Time propagation by cuttings, mainly. It's a perennial uh, herb. It likes full sun, so regular watering, you can regular watering or not, and, and you should water the soil, not the plant, otherwise it tends to develop leaf disease. Uh, Prune during the, the beginning of the spring for plant development. So basically with the time tends to dry out and it's not so appealing plants during the winter, but before in the beginning of the, 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 the season, the spring season, I normally prune the plants for better development. Uh, the best is to harvest stems before flowering, although the flowers can also be eaten. And the majority we use it in the kitchen or in our recipes fresh or dry. One of the topics that I'm going to speak today is also edible flowers. So the examples that I'm bringing here are edible flowers, normally ornamental. So edible flowers that they are grown because they for edible or for ornamental reasons. And, but don't forget that before I already mentioned that also, the flowers of the herbs, if they can be, some flowers of the herbs can be edible. So I'm going to basically mention some flowers that I didn't mention before. So very important, choose only safe to eat flowers. They are 
don't really go and just eat all the flowers that you just find in the garden because that can go also go wrong. And um, the majority you eat the petals, not the, you can see in this ex ex example, there's a petal, the stigma and the stem of, of the flower itself. So we, the majority, we just eat the petals. So one of the examples I bring here today, the viola, and uh, they are propagated by seeds that are shade tolerance and sensitive to high temperatures. I do have it in the garden, the norm, they are in the shady corner, although the slugs love it. And so I um, don't have big su success with, with, the, with the viola. Uh, uh, it's good to remove dry flowers for more development. So once they dry out, you just remove the, the flowers and they tend to develop. When, when the stems are too big, it's good to prune. Also for bigger development, normally when the plant goes until 20, 25 centimeters, you just cut out the, the stems that they are developed and the plant itself will develop more stems and of course more flowers. And normally it's used in culinary use, fresh, dry, crystallized, or as a jelly. Calendula, this was a big surprise for me because I do have it in the garden. It's every year just go from seeds and it grows and it grows and it grows. And also I use it in the garden as a repellent and also for attract beneficial insects. So I just figured out in fact last year that we can also use it as a, uh, for, for it. So the, I propagated and the majority by seeds. It's a full sun uh, flower. It, it likes to five to six hours a day, minimal. Uh, one interesting characteristic is the flowers are closing during dark and rain. And normally calendula is used in culinary use, dry or fresh, infusions, cosmetic and medicinal use. So it's a very powerful <laughs> plant, in fact. Nasturtius, this is the, the dead word that I don't know how to pronounce it in English. And, but also I use it in a garden as a repellent. It's very interesting because the roots repellent for another bugs, the dead bugs for, for not big bugs, but bugs that are, are insects that not, the majority, they, they came to attack another crops. For example, the squash, pumpkins, and uh, zucchinis. So I use this plant for repel, for, for just basically to protect the other crops. But the propagation is by seeds or by plant division. It's annual plant, so we cannot forget that. In fact, if we just propagated by division, it means that it has to be in the, in a, during the life cycle of, of the plant. Likes full sun, average six hours a day. L needs regular watering and to keep soil moisture. Uh, flowers, leaves, fruits, and green seeds are edible and normally is used as a culinary use, dry or fresh. Marigolds also used in the garden, here in the garden, to, to repel uh, bad insects or insects that they are coming to eat the, the vegetables. And the propagation is by seeds. There's a big diversity of colors. You have probably you saw them in some shops in different colors there. Basically, there are a lot of cultivars. So it means they're the big colors. It likes full sun. Uh, it's good to remove the flowers when dry. You will see also there's a lot of, they produce a lot of seeds. So normally when they dry, I just take them out and I have, it means that I will have seeds every year to, to replant it during the spring because they are tender. It means that they don't, they, they are not hardy flowers. So normally I just put them out after the last day of frost. So here in the Czech Republic is in the middle of May after the three kings. Uh, uh, what it means that three kings is in the legend. It means that's the la last uh, day of frost in the middle of May. Normally, it can be used as a culinary use and used in the garden as, uh, sorry about the mistake, as a companion plant. That's what I wanted to say, as I mentioned before. Petunias propagation by seeds. 
light full sun more than eight hours a day, but they are sensitive to high temperatures. This is what I mentioned before. That's why is it good sometimes to, put, to, to grow them in pots because when they are small, they need some sunlight, but after when they are, when they are adults, they are sensitive or during the, during the season, you just bring, bring the, 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 the plants to a more shady or more, more shady or even inside. Uh, it's good to prune when it's bigger than 20 to 25 centimeters to have compact plants, otherwise they just spread all over. And normally they are used as a culinary or ornamental use. And the last one, primula, propagation by seeds or plants division. It's a shade tolerant plant. So it doesn't like full sun. It's best to grow in the shady corner of the garden or uh, in a window that doesn't get much sun. It, it needs constant water. And this is it's an, it's a, a nice association when normally they are shade tolerant. They like more moisture in the soil. And normally primula is used in culinary use, fresh or dry in salads or Canapés. I don't know if it's pronounced like this. So it's basically. So again, thank you very much for, for paying attention. This is just a short list, what I consider the most common and famous herbs and edible flowers. There are more and more and more. Big lists is the world inside of the plants world, inside of the uh, ornamental world. So if you want to know more, if you, if, you, if you want to know more about this, or if you want to discuss some topic related with this, please feel free to, 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 to write me. So start today, start the edible landscape. This is what I'm doing here in the garden. Thank you. And now, if you have any question, please, uh, just write me here. I know there. Uh, I don't see any, but actually I have a question. Uh, does basil change uh, taste uh, after you preserve it uh, with uh, olive oil? Uh, a little bit, but not that much because you are preserving in oil. And so you, you, mean, you mean the olive oil change the taste? Uh, no, I mean? if the basil changed the taste. No, in effect, what I'm doing is that I'm using the olive oil for, for, for pasta. So when I add the basil to, to the olive oil, what I'm doing basically, mm -hmm. I'm adding the flavor to the olive oil. Okay. It's not, I'm not using the, 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 the basil itself. What I'm doing after is that I preserve the basil with a, a little bit of olive oil inside of this zip bags plastic bags or because i know that uh, after i reuse it of course the plastic bag but normally i'm using i add olive oil and i freeze it so in this case i'm preserving and i'm using the the, the basil for also for everything for pasta but in the case of basil inside of the olive oil what i want is basically to add some flavor to to the to the olive oil okay thank you I was actually there are many, wondering many many techniques uh, and I'm just learning more and more about this uh, it's, a, it's a world very fascinating world and um, so okay I, I'm uh, happy that I share some of what I know with you yeah it was nice it's a really interesting topic and actually I noticed that the many chefs started to use for a decoration edible flowers um, I didn't try many Mm, but but I would like to. Yeah, I, 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 it was a big definitely it was a big surprise for me that m many flowers that I have in the garden they are mm -hmm. edible. And I'm actually uh, shocked uh, by viola that it's but edible. Viola, uh, one of the examples very common in in the in the in the meadows here in in, in Europe, it's mm. the. Dandelions, dandelions, which is Pompelishka in, in, in Czech, <laughs> yellow flower. So in fact, you can eat everything from, from the flower as well. Of mm -hmm. course, you should be controlled where, where do you pick them, but in fact, they appear 
in the in in the loams in in the gardens or or everywhere and they are edible and, and you can use it for salads or you can just eat the bulbs or the, or the flowers or so just it's good to look around it's good to look around and in fact there are many things that can be edible but be careful on what you are going to try and one of the topic one of the things important also what i'm doing here in the garden is to try to to have these edible flowers or vegetable vegetables or edible flowers or herbs but in a perennial so it means that every year in fact they are just producing and producing so you can have it so it, it basically you have harvest after harvest after harvest every year mm -hmm. less work in fact and it's more beneficial for 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 ecological reasons because you are not taking out the plant from 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 the place but this is another topic that probably uh, angela will explore more and maybe i will have opportunity to 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 share more about this yeah yeah uh, it will be on 22nd of july and we will also have a on 30th um, webinar about plants for a busy lifestyle with Teresa. Okay. And uh, we have one question like, which of the flowers tastes the best? I didn't try them all. Yeah? I'm sure I, that's, I brought here some of the examples, of what I start, but I would say that I started to try the marigolds this year and they are nice. Which ones? Uh, Marigolds mm -hmm. and also the calendulas because it's what I have here. As I said, the viola I didn't have, and I was not lucky because the the slugs just <laughs> told us all in the garden. Mm -hmm. And and one of the that I didn't ma ma mention here is borage. Uh, it's I have here in one of the examples. Let me go back here. Borage is this one here on the left side and soon I will try it because I just planted before yesterday and they are blooming in this moment so uh, mm -hmm. okay and you use it mostly for like some meals or you make make something I, I don't out know, of it but you mean like the, the calendula yeah. or the I use it also in salads or mm -hmm. meals but majority in salads I, I would say okay all right not so, much, think... not so much for it it's not so much for decoration but the salads it's also good because it gives a different text not texture but color to the salad mm -hmm. itself okay okay i think we don't have more questions so um you have something more to say no the only thing i have to say is that if you have any question if you would like to so please free, feel free to write me my email let me go back is luis.n.monteiro at gmail.com and feel free to write me okay. i'm always happy to network and to and to share and to and to share knowledge and also to to learn more and more about yes thank you i also learned gardening <laughs> And uh, if you would like to, if you have some ideas and you would like to contribute uh, to our project, you can also write uh, um, to our project manager or uh, you have uh, an email on our uh, event description. Yes, I do have some ideas about related with this webinar service. Cool, cool. So I will, I will write you for sure. And okay. it will be good also for, for, the, for the people who, who visit your website and also for sharing in social media. Because this is, in fact, we are compiling during this webinar series, we are compiling a lot of interesting information and useful information, and it can be just compiling one, yeah. in everything together and, and share it with the, with the audience. Yeah. So. Okay, so I think we will finish. So thank you very much for presenting. It was really thank nice. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. So maybe we will see you on the Angela's webinar on there as well. Yes, okay. probably. Okay, so take care. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye-bye.